good afternoon I just wanted to jump on here again real quick it's uh, January 12th Tuesday 2021 and just wanted to touch on a couple things again that the Lord has been continually um, pressing on my heart for about a couple weeks now but only uh, yesterday and through the night it was really heavy so I just wanted to share a little bit about uh, a couple things and we're gonna look today at some scriptures we go ahead and start um, Romans 12 1 and 2 you guys know this one uh, just read it therefore brothers and sisters in view of the mercies of God I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Okay, so you know what? Let's go ahead and look at another portion of scripture in Luke chapter 10. And I am not alone today, so I may have to pause, but we'll see. See how it goes. Um, Luke chapter 10, uh, 38. Let's just verify what verses through 42. Okay. While they were traveling, he entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who also sat at the Lord's feet and was listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, and she came up and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? So tell her to give me a hand. The Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has made the right choice and it will not be taken away from her. Okay, so this is... Um, First of all, if you if we go into that passage for a minute, just wanted to touch on some details. So we are aware that Martha asked Jesus into her home, right? But she was too busy to take time to even recognize that he was there, even though she was the one that invited him in. How sad is that, right? And in fact, he was yelling, she was yelling at Jesus, asking him to rebuke her sister because she thought for sure she was in the right. And so it's just, it's just kind of an, an epiphany um, that she would invite Jesus in, but yet she could have cared less that he was there. Um, so... All that to say, with the way things are moving in the world today, um, I have been hearing and seeing a lot of Christians, professing Christians, say, I care about um, justice, um, fairness, equality, I care about the truth. Well those are good things and what the Lord has put on my heart is that the truth of the fact that where does that justice fairness and equality comes come from personally and it comes from the um, the truth that we were all created in the image of God so we're all created in the image of God he has all of those things he gives them all to us and the reason you know that is because if you look around, 
even at your non-believing friends, anybody you ask, they are going to care about justice, equality, and fairness. It does not reside only in the believer's heart. That is across the board. So those things don't make you a child of God. So we must look at what does. And so that's kind of where and why if we go the route of justice, fairness, and equality, of course you believe in those things. Even the demons want those things. Even the non-believer wants those things. But that's not what sets us apart because that's not about the gospel. So what you think about these things are going to determine whether you are going down for Christ or for those things. So when you talk about those things, we, we know that justice, fairness, and equality didn't come to us by our own right. They were given to us from God, but there's a gigantic hole here. If that is your focus, if that is what you stand on, the gigantic hole is grace. Because, again, do you know the lengths, the widths, and the heights to which Christ died for you? His love. Do you know his love? Christ humbled himself even to the point of death on a cross. There's no fairness, no equality, or justice in any of that. Grace is the gift of God. So we must pray that the Holy Spirit flood our hearts so that we can love as Christ has loved us. Um, let me see. Okay, looking at those three words again, justice, fairness, and equality, the reason why we have no legs to stand on those is because What's fair to one person, and you've all experienced this if you think about it, so give it some thought. What's fair to one person is not necessarily fair to the other person. What's equal to one person is not necessarily equal to the other person. What's just to one person may not be just to the other person. Um, so for those reasons alone, when you are... Um, going back and forth on those terms, um, it's only an opinion. It's really only an opinion. Um, that's why we can't stand on these legs because they will break every single time. It's only an opinion. Truth is the only thing we should stand on. It's very, very important. Um, okay, so if we are expecting, we are the United States, I get that, um, and actually it's funny because my mom was speaking to us when she was here about how it's so bizarre because everyone's independent here now, but when she was growing up, they were taught in school that the United States was a melting pot. You came here and you, and you conformed to the United States. It's not like to each his own. Now it's to each his own, even though everyone wants to act like it's united. We are not united in anything. In fact, if there's any unity in any form it's by the grace of God for a time only only unity um, humans aren't united in anything but spiritual unity is for eternity so there's a huge difference so spiritual unity is for eternity but there's never there's not going to be unity in any other thing. That's it. 
Um, and that's why there's, um, there's contention. That's why there's confusion. That's why there's chaos. And that's why there's anger. And that's why there's rage. Because we want so badly to have equality and to have justice and to have fairness. But it, it's not. It's just not. <laughs> um, God is going to have the last word. He, he is just. And we can do justly. We can do justly ourselves. But we can't expect um, this world to be just. Um, so as we follow Christ, and again, we can look at Ephesians 5, just real briefly. Um, it says very clearly, therefore be imitators of God as dearly loved children and walk in love as Christ also loved us and gave himself for us a sacrificial and fragrant offering to God. But sexual immorality and any impurity or greed should not even be heard from among, of among you, as is proper for saints. Obscene and foolish talking or crude joking are not suitable, but rather giving thanks. For know and recognize this, every sexual immoral or impure or greedy person who is an idolater does not have an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty arguments. For God's wrath is coming on the disobedient because of these things. Therefore, do not become their partners. For you were once in darkness, but now you are the light in the Lord. Live as children of the light. For the fruit of the light consists of all goodness and righteousness and truth. Testing what is pleasing to the Lord. Don't participate in the fruitless works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what is done by them in secret. Everything exposed by the light is made visible. For what makes everything visible is light. Therefore it is said, get up sleeper and rise up from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Pay a careful attention then how to live not as unwise people, but as wise making most of the time because the days are evil. So don't be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And don't get drunk with wine, which leads to reckless living, but be filled by the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making music with your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of Christ. He has all of this. He has, he is just, he is going to pour out his wrath on the disobedient. We need to just be rejoicing that we are indeed his children, submitting to God and his authority. He is sovereign. He is doing all of this. It is going on as he wills it. Um, we do not need to doubt that. And we can have the joy of the Lord. Um, even when we wear masks, guys. I have a business and we have to wear masks. It stinks. <laughs> but am I willing to die on that hill? No, it's okay. I'm not going to die from the mask. I don't need to prove any points. Um, but I, there's a, I have a situation. And, um, I can, it's just one of those things. Um, I can still sing. I can still worship. I can still pray. Um, so that's not a, a hill I'm willing to die on guys. And, um, so, you know, it is, it is a, it is a pick your battles, pick your battles. Um, it's just, it is a difficult position to be in. Uh, but it's, it's, we, we are, this is not our home. This is not our home. We are not free. A lot of times we're not free in our circumstances. We can be free in Christ and still be bound in our circumstances. I mean, I mean, God, far be it from being a martyr here in the U S are you kidding me? But if you look at every martyr, 
um, in history, they were free in Christ, but they were not free in their circumstances. Why do we want to push that envelope? Who cares? Who cares? I get it. It stinks. And it's going to come back to haunt us. I'm sure of it. It's okay. But I, I know that I'm ready to go whenever he wants to take me. Um, and so, again, the hill. <laughs> die on the hill of Christ. Don't die on the hill of, I ain't wearing a mask. <laughs> okay, there's this, this, this crazy. And I b believe me, I've gone waffled. I've waffled greatly over this. Um, but that's just not a hill um, God has asked me to die on. Uh, because he wants me to be clear in my reverence for God and in my worshipful heart to God. And so I've had to spend a lot of time in prayer um, because I'm annoyed just like everybody else. I'm annoyed. I'm over it. Um, it it's just one of those things. And I have this business that we have to require it. I'm like, oh my gosh, but that's okay. We're going to get through this, guys. Um, so just do it. It's okay. You're not, you're not, um, sub you're not, what is it? You're not, the, it's not the mark of the beast, okay? It's not any of that. Um, is it foolish and is it um, wrong to have the mandate? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but one of the things that I was reminded yesterday in a sermon that I really, truly enjoyed yesterday uh, was he reminded me that when Jesus was walking the earth, his concern was to rebuke the religious leaders, not the evil government. He didn't, he didn't rebuke the evil government. He knew the evil of the world. He did not waste his time on that. He instead went after the religious zealots who were walking in legalism and not in grace. And that is where he stood. He wanted to, um, he, he wanted to rebuke them. Um, not the evil government. So, there you have it. If we are followers of Christ, we will submit to God. Um, we will walk with a spirit of humility, considering others better than ourselves. And I'm not saying anything about the masks. That's not what I'm talking about. Um, but I am considering others better than myself. That's it. And I will still preach Christ crucified in my submission in standing on the truth of God's word that of course, of course you believe in equality and justice and fairness. Of course you do. You know why? Because you were created in the image of God. Everyone has that. You're not special. <laughs> but do you know what, what makes you special? is when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior so that you have eternal life because you are a sinner and you need a Savior. And then you're a child of God. He allows you to be a child of God. All right, so there you have it. Um, just a little bit of, uh, and, and you look at Mary and Martha and you see Martha was more of the religious zealot very legalistic in her ways and her behaviors. And Mary's just like taking it in. She's like, my Lord is here. How can I do anything else right now? My Lord is here. And, she, and Martha's the one rebuking Jesus. Like, you know, she's going to make Jesus do something. And he's like, I'm sorry. Mary has chosen the right thing. It's like that discernment to know what's right from what's almost right. We think we got it right, and we got it all wrong. He came 2,000 years ago over and flipped the whole, the whole world upside down. He didn't come as everyone expected him to come. He didn't come with, 
with this, I'm gonna do everything. I'm gonna get her done. I'm gonna knock everybody off their socks and I'm gonna do this and that and the other thing. No! Oh my goodness. So be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you know what his perfect and pleasing will is. Y'all have a blessed day. Love you. See you soon.